What's up, challengers? Welcome to the Kick Fit Challenge Kickoff Seminar. Today, we're going to be going over all things nutrition related as you go through the next four weeks of this journey with us working out and cleaning up your nutrition habits. Look forward to uh, talking with you guys for the next couple minutes here. Moving into our first slide, and before we get really down into the nitty gritty of this nutrition seminar, I wanna let you guys know how excited I am that you're here with me today. This means that you are taking action, whether that be uh, to become a better mother, a better father, a better business owner, a better manager, employee, husband, wife, best friend, um, uncle, aunt, the best you you can be, you have decided to do something for yourself. You wanted to get into an awesome exercise program with coaches, community, and also what we'll talk about a little bit more today is how you can change your nutrition to incorporate better lifestyle habits for you, your longevity, and your future. Now, that's some pretty powerful stuff. But you want, you want to know what plays a huge role in achieving all of those things? What you eat and drink. How do you navigate this? What have you guys done in the past? I know most of you have probably explored through maybe some fad diets, um, read about some outdated research, the promises of the quick fix. You guys have seen the commercials for the detox teas, the slim waist trainers, um, you name it, it's out there. Uh, all the different supplements you can take, the meal replacement shakes. It can be confusing and sometimes you get advice from professionals that leave you with big question mark emojis around your head. Um, it's information overload out there and anything from Facebook to Instagram, talk shows on television, live news channels, they're not much better when it comes to all this because there is no real right or wrong. It's a lot of gray areas. How many of you guys out there have uh, thought that what you were eating was healthy, but only to find out later, somebody's telling you that it's not, that it's doing you harm, um, whether that be don't eat meat anymore. Don't eat any dairy anymore. Um, don't, you know, go for an all plant diet. You know, um, how about when you see a friend who's slimmed down a lot, but here they are, you know, lost a ton of weight, which is really, really awesome, but they've lowered their caloric intake to a thousand calories a day, maybe 500 a day. And then all of a sudden, you know, you look at them and you're like, man, that's not real life for me. That's not sustainable. I'd be starving all the time. I'd be hangry. I, you know, want to punch my pillow at night. I, would you know, pull my hair out. There's no way that's realistic. Um, so I'm here to kind of set that story straight today and help you guys on a better path to success. Here at KickFit Studio, we know that there's no one size fits all. People need patience, they need empathy, we need to be careful uh, with their emotions, with how they're feeling, and that means we wanna listen to you, we wanna learn your lifestyle, we wanna discover what's important to you. If that's you know the fall months when it's football season and you wanna be sure that you can fit in a couple beers on the weekends. You wanna make sure that the buffalo wings fit in there and they don't set you back. Um, working together with us is gonna help create the right nutritional approach for you. A diet or a lifestyle way of eating that's personal and unique based on your goals. Everybody is completely different. Everybody has a different schedule. Everybody has different families. Everybody has different things that are important to them. So um, typically when I have you guys live, I like to play a little game that gets everyone involved. So let's see if we can get you thinking here at home. If I were to ask you a simple question, when I say the word food, what type of words come directly to your head? Some people, when uh, they think about food, they think of the literal term food. Some people say pizza. Some people say popcorn. 
Um, some people even say wine. Yes, wine comes from grapes, so technically um, you could consider it a food. Um, but other times we liked, we get emotions, we get happiness, we get confusion, we get anger. Um, all these things tell a story. It gives us information as to how you're feeling. What does it mean to you? It, it helps us communicate. Um, a lot of people have traditions in their family, like every Christmas, their Grandma Jo um, makes the best blueberry muffins and everybody usually eats four of them between Christmas and New Year's or something like that. Everybody has that tradition in their family of some sort. Maybe that's lasagna on uh, 4th of July, who knows? It's about education. Uh, we go through life celebrating with food. Let's see, Thanksgiving we just had, Christmas, birthdays, 4th of July, Easter. They all revolve around a type of meal. Um, birthdays are, are one that's huge in particular where you're celebrating with, typically us adults are having alcoholic beverages, you're going out to um, restaurants for parties, you're getting together with family. Um, so it's way more than just the quote unquote term fuel. A lot of people say that you have to think about food just as fuel. You can't, it's not possible. Um, you get pleasure from things that you like to eat. And if you're, if you, if you don't like everything that you're eating, then something's wrong because that, that means you're forcing it down and that's no fun and it's not a way to live. Um, so just recognize that food is a part of our family. It's our way of life. It's our culture. And most importantly, it's our health. But we must recognize that our journey and evolution will be a journey filled with highs and lows. And I'm here to tell you that my journey has been a lot of highs and a lot of lows, but I still keep trying every single day because I am worth the effort. So. Now you're probably asking, what's next, coach? Where do we go from here? Well, I like to break it down into a simple three-step process. Identify and remove nutritional deficiencies, adjust the food amount and type that you're eating, and then fine tune some small details from there. Seems pretty simple, right? Let's start moving. First up, Identifying and removing nutritional deficiencies. The most common deficiencies that I see with new clients, first of all, is no one drinks enough water. On occasion, I do find that there are people who have a great habit of staying hydrated, which kudos to you guys because it is really tough to get in enough water. Do you guys know how much water you should be drinking per day? Well, if, if you don't, and just in case, your goal should be to drink half of your body weight in ounces of water per day. So say, for example, you're a 150 pound man or woman, you guys should be drinking about 75 ounces of water per day. So think about the eight ounce glass of water that you probably have had and try to get about eight or nine more today. Um, if that's not possible and you're like, holy crap, Shannon, that's, that's way too much, start slow. Try to start with one extra glass today, two extra glasses tomorrow, three extra glasses the next day, and see how you're feeling. Uh, one of the things you'll realize is uh, you'll probably feel a lot more energy, uh, but you'll also, you, you know, in the beginning, you might have to pee a lot. And that's okay, um, because eventually you will, uh, you'll train your body for your new habit and you won't have to use the restroom so much. Um, little things here, vitamins and minerals, in particular, zinc, magnesium, chromium, and vitamins B, D, and E. Now, that doesn't mean I want you guys to go out and buy all these vitamins in a bottle. You should be getting most of these vitamins and minerals from the micronutrients that are packed inside of your daily nutritional habits. If not, and you're eating a lot of packaged and processed foods currently, once you switch to more nutrient-dense whole foods, you'll be getting all those daily vitamins and minerals, and I bet you again, you'll start feeling a difference very soon. The next one up I wanna talk about is protein. In particularly women, and in men with low appetites, we find that they are not eating enough protein. 
And if you were to guess how much protein you're supposed to eat per day, I would highly recommend one ounce of protein per pound of body weight. So again, if you guys are the 150 pound man or woman, I highly recommend you get at least 150 grams of protein per day. Now, again, that does depend on the type of exercise and your goals, um, but if you want to maintain muscle mass and lose fat mass, having that protein is very important. Those amino acids are essential to muscle building and fat burning. And then again, we now have the essential fatty acids. 95% of the population is deficient in fatty acids. You can see down here in the bottom left corner, I'm talking about omega-3s and omega-6, which you can find in nuts and in fish. If you're not particularly keen on fish, that is okay. This is one place where I would, would recommend a supplement called fish oil. You can get that in pill form or in liquid form. Liquid form obviously is the most pure. Um, but either way, you can always supplement here if you're not a huge fish eater. Um, but I would highly recommend this because it helps your bones stay nice and lubricated. So if you're feeling achy or your joints feel achy from time to time from a workout or regular daily activities, getting those omega-3s in daily will definitely help here. So now we'll talk about number two, adjust food amount and type. We've carefully created each and every one of you a meal plan in which you can weigh and measure your food to ensure the right amount of nutrients and calories are entering your body. Here's the concept that those plans are based upon. So your hand is a proportionate size to your body and it never changes and is always with you, making it the perfect tool for measuring food and nutrients. Minimal counting here is required. If you guys do have a food scale at home, definitely use this um, instead of guessing. But if you guys are going out to eat, out to dinner, or in a place where you can't control the portion size, knowing these things off the top of your hand, get it, uh, will help you uh, in the long run in eyeballing your food and making sure your portion sizes are under control. So for women, we recommend a serving of protein be about one palm size. A serving of vegetables will be about the size of your fist, which is also uh, translates to about a cup. A serving of car, carbohydrates is one cup to hand. And then a serving of fats is about the size of your thumb. So think of fats as uh, maybe a handful of almonds, a scoop of peanut butter, a tablespoon or a tablespoon and a half of olive oil, so on and so forth. Moving into the importance of protein, protein, like I talked about earlier, is for growth, recovery, and power. Did you know that protein is a component of every single cell in your body? In fact, your hair and nails are mostly made of protein. Your body uses it to build and repair tissue, and you also need it to make enzymes, hormones, and other body chemicals. It's an important building block of bones, muscles, cartilage, skin, and blood. Again, for protein, men, we recommend that you guys actually have two palm size portions. Uh, women, again, one, about 20 to 30 grams. You can find protein in meat, fish, eggs, cottage cheese, Greek yogurt. Um, and by meat, that could be chicken, turkey, pork, beef, um, veal, venison, any, anything like that um, are great sources of protein. So, uh, for, for this one, guys, again, it's very important to get your protein in for weight loss, fat loss, and muscle growth and to help your body repair. Now, let's talk about carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are fuel, are for fuel, and body reconsumption. Carbs typically get blamed for causing weight gain, but the truth of the matter is that carbohydrates are essential for weight control and play an integral part in energy balance. Differences in carbohydrates can be best explained by breaking them down into two categories. Let's call the first category vegetables. 
Vegetables can be asparagus, spinach, green beans, squash, carrots, peppers, zucchini, any type of vegetable you can think of except for potatoes. Sorry guys, those fall in a different category. Men, per serving or per meal, you'd like you need to aim for about two fist size portions. Women, about one fist size is good for you. And there's examples right here, broccoli, spinach, um, greens and salads, carrots, etc. The other category for carbohydrates is going to be grains, starches, beans, and fruits. Men, again, you'll want two fist size portions here, and women, one fist size portion. So this um, little image here still says vegetables, but grains and starches can still be considered quinoa, couscous, rice, brown rice, black beans, lima beans, black eyed peas, Bananas, apples, oranges, all those different types of carbohydrates are still important. So don't shy away from them, but these ones you'll want to limit a little bit more than the vegetables. Technically, I like to tell my clients, if you're hungry and it's something off the plan and it's not time for your next meal, grab a veggie. They're always free in my book. Now, moving into the fats category. Fats are essential for fuel, uh, meaning helping you stay satiated and ready to go for your workouts, plus vitamin absorption. Dietary fats are important nutritional component, not only because your body needs them for building healthy cells and producing hormones, but fat is also required for the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins. This includes all the vitamins that I talked about originally that come inside of the vegetables and the meats and the proteins, which includes vitamin A, D, E, and K, which all perform a variety of important functions inside of our body. So men, again, you're going to double your portions here and have two thumb size portions. As well as women, you will still stay down to that one thumb size portion. Oils, butters, nut butters, nuts, seeds, anything like that will definitely help you get your essential fats. But also remember, if you are having whole eggs, those are great uh, and nicely packed with fats as well. Now that we've gone through the first two important steps, now it's time to fine tune the details. What's left? Okay, Shannon, you've taught me the right portion sizes, examples of things for me to eat. Now, how often do I eat? What times do I eat? And what do I eat before and after a workout? For many, many years, dietitians, nutritionists, um, certified nutrition coaches, fitness professionals, even myself thought that the best way to approach meal frequency is splitting up your food um, into small meals frequently throughout the day. From early research, we assumed that this would speed up the metabolism, help control the hormones, insulin, and cortisol, and help you manage your appetite better. However, a recent review that I read in the Journal of International Society of Sports Nutrition suggested otherwise. So what does it all mean? As long as we eat the right foods in the right amounts, meal frequency is a matter of personal preference. Now what I mean here is you still need to eat calorically lighter whole foods versus calorically dense and processed foods, but when you eat them, or meal timing as well, is not as important as it was once thought to be. Now, that we've covered meal frequency, what should you have before, during, and after your workout? This is a really common question that I wanna go over with you guys. It doesn't matter really for anyone but an elite athlete, um, someone who is training for the Olympics, someone who's training for a big kickboxing fight, someone who is a bodybuilder. These are the people where the workout nutrition before, during, after, meal timing, things like that 
are more important. Training specifically for maximal muscle adaption and our training with high volume and intensity, potentially multiple times every day, those are the people where it's most important. If that's you, then yes, eating an appropriate meal about one to two hours before and after training uh, for training or a competition can be very important. For most advanced individuals, using a branch chain amino acid, which is a drink, uh, a powder that you put inside your drink, which is low in calories and carbs, or a protein plus carbohydrate drink, which is higher in carbs and calories during training, can make a real difference in terms of adaptation and recovery. So I would recommend you guys, if you're feeling like uh, you're getting to these workouts and maybe you're burning more muscle um, and you want to introduce branched chain amino acids into your diet, that's another supplement that I would recommend to help with your weight loss and fat loss journey. Um, again, this is something that I didn't introduce into my journey until a couple of years in. Um, because I felt as though just cleaning up my nutritional habits with whole, um, whole foods versus processed foods really helped me in the beginning. Now, one thing I'd like to add to workout nutrition is if you're exercising for general health and fitness or simply, simply looking to feel and look better, you should consider this question once you've eliminated all the deficiencies in your diet, regulated your total food intake like we've talked about, like we've talked about, and starting to eat right for your body type. Now, take a look at this graph here. We've got ectomorphs, mesomorphs, and endomorphs. All good body types, all different, um, but none you know, where I would categorize one person over the other is better. Um, and I might want to gently remind you that done all the above consistent, consistently, yes, every day, over and over and over, and you're still looking for a little boost, this is where, like I mentioned before, I would enter, introduce the branch chain amino acids. 5 to 15 grams mix into 1 liter of water and sipped on during an exercise ses session or before or after should help you do the trick. Eating right for your body type is something that I'm not gonna go over here in this nutrition program, but should you have any questions, go ahead and ask Coach uh, in the Facebook group and we'll definitely help answer some of the questions for you. Let's talk about exercise. In relation to all the nutrition we've discussed, we've made this part even easier than following the nutrition plan. Simply download our mobile app, it's called Zen Planner, on your smartphone. Everybody take it out, you can do it as I go through the slide. We will have, or have already, sent you a username to your email address and password at the conclusion of this meeting or before your first class. Reserve the classes you'd like to attend in advance by using your desktop or your mobile device. Trust me guys, the phone is a lot easier. Check in for each workout using the iPad that's stationed at the front door once you get to the gym. Please note that we really only want you guys to register for the classes you plan on attending. If you schedule and can attend, simply just go back into the app and remove yourself from the class an hour before the start time so that that spot in that class can be filled with someone who can attend the class. Otherwise, we won't know that you're not coming and then somebody else unfortunately will not get that spot. So let's all play fair, keep each other accountable and make sure that if you do plan in advance, you are still coming and not forgetting to unreserve for class. Throughout the challenge, you'll receive access to our new guys. You'll have three group workouts each week and those who are members already with us, you guys are upgrading to unlimited. You can choose any class at any time of the day for your workouts, morning, noon, evening, and even the weekend. All available classes will automatically show up on your mobile device. Now, in regards to the exercise, the class structure and format, for those of you who have not been with us before, will be as follows. We'll have a five to 10 minute warm up, 
This will typically involve not using our gloves just yet. So go ahead and find your spot on the floor, begin stretching out before class has begun. Leave your gloves off to the side and the instructor uh, will instruct you when to put your gloves on. For five to 10 minutes, we'll go through a skill instruction and some shadow boxing. For the chunk of the workout, for about 20 to 30 minutes, we'll have the actual workout where the instructor will lead you through each exercise. And then we'll have five to 10 minutes of abs at the end and a cool down, totaling about a 50 minute class, but allot yourself, you know, maybe five to 10 minutes before and after class to wrap your hands, put your gloves on, take your shoes off, get onto the floor, drive home, all that good stuff. Movements and modalities include all body weight movements. You'll be kicking, punching, squatting, using your core, getting some conditioning, and lots and lots of cardio for the heart. But just know, you guys, if you have a previous injury or something that might be a little sore that day, but you can push through, we're happy to scale or modify any movement for any injuries or ailments coming through so you can still get a good workout. So don't shy away from KickFit workouts just because there's something that you've done in the past that may hinder you from moving fluidly throughout the workout. But we'll work with you to make sure you get a really great work workout each time. As we've gone through the nutrition and the exercise, now I'd like to talk to you guys a little bit about lifestyle habits. We have three concepts we'd like for you to master inside of this four week challenge. Number one, never miss a Monday. Number two, become goal oriented. And number three, interview yourself daily. And we do that by having everyone establish some SMART goals. Write down a goal, make sure it's specific, measurable, reasonably attainable, relevant, and you've got a time base for it. Let's talk about rule number one. Never miss a Monday. Although some would argue that lifestyle hack really only applies to your workout, we believe at Kifa Studio, its reach is much more than that. Those who never miss a Monday use the weekend to unwind, but make it a point to outline what needs to get done in the days that follow, from meal planning to PowerPoint presentations. To never miss a Monday means that you're over-prepared for the week ahead. You don't wanna wait until the last minute to get things done. When it comes to your health and fitness, schedule your workout as an appointment, just like a hair appointment or a doctor's appointment that you cannot miss and prepare your meals in advance instead of flying by the seat of your pants. As a parent, you balance your schedule with your children's and come to terms with the fact that poor planning is not an excuse in your book. You balance your checkbook and you know where your money's going to be going for that week Bills and debits are anticipated rather than surprises at the time of the sale. Truthfully, Monday is your first chance to make a good impression on the week. Are you going to set yourself up for success or are you going to, going to fall into the trap of having the case of the Mondays? Even if you have a weird schedule and your Monday starts on a Tuesday, Remember to get your never miss a Tuesday workout in. It's okay. Now let's talk about number two, becoming goal oriented. What do all superheroes, spies, professional athletes, and your local pizza man have in common? Well, despite the fact that they probably all impeccably dressed, they've all got one mission to accomplish, whether it be to win the game, complete the spy mission, or deliver that pizza, they know exactly what they need to do to be successful. Believing in that goal gives them the strength to persevere and succeed, regardless of the obstacles that are put in front of them. Pizza man gets a snowstorm, it's a wintry day, it's raining, he forgot his driving glasses, whatever it is, he'll get the pizza there. Same with superheroes and spies and Tim Tebow, you know, Things like evil villains and barking dogs, those are, some of, those are some of the obstacles all these guys have to hurdle over. The question is, do you know what your goals are in life? When heading into any situation, would it be valuable to ponder those questions? Why the heck am I here? What is my goal? How do I achieve it? 
By simply knowing your goals and what you're setting out to achieve, you'll set yourself apart from those who lack clarity in their conquest. After you scheduled your workouts, you have set your goals. Now the last thing I'd like for you guys to do, and rule number three, is interview yourself daily. Imagine what type of productivity and person you could be in life if you treated each day like you were interviewing for the job of your dreams. Would you get hired? Or is there someone else out there who's hungrier better qualified and committed to doing whatever it takes to get what they want in life. One thing is for certain, whether or not you're competing for Supermom, Employee of the Month, CEO of the Month, Best Dad in the World, you better be damn sure to be on top of your game at all times. Because truthfully, your kids don't care if you had a stressful day at work, your employees don't care that you had a stressful day at work, and your employer isn't buying your excuse about traffic. If you want to live every day to the max, treat each moment like someone is out there trying to take it from you. Now that we've fine-tuned the details, I'd like for you guys to play a game with yourselves throughout these next four weeks. The rules of the game are as follows. Starting at 9, going all the way down to 1. Let's try to get 9,000 steps per day. I know most of you somehow have a tracker on your phone, on your Fitbit, whatever. Make that a goal, 9,000 steps. Most of you be like, huh, I get that in three hours. But hey, whatever you get in the day, add, add another 50, add another 100. Let's get those steps in. Try to make it a goal to get eight hours of sleep each night. Your body needs the rest and recovery. Seven glasses, not classes, of water per day. If you guys have already done the calculations like we talked about before, aim for more if you need more. Six minutes of meditation throughout the day. Take six minutes, only six, to rest, shut your eyes, and recuperate, and get yourself back on track to get through the rest of the day. Make sure we're getting five servings of fruits and vegetables. For most people, I'd say, one vegetable, or excuse me, one fruit to every three vegetables would be a good ratio there. Four mental slash stretching breaks throughout the day. Get up from that desk chair, take a walk, stretch it out, come back rejuvenated and refreshed and get going again. Three healthy meals and snacks. Make sure you've got three healthy meals and grab some snacks and eat as much as you can of whole non-processed foods each day. Two hours of no phone before bed. This one can be really tough, you guys. But if you do it, I promise, your relationship with your dogs, your cats, your kids, your husbands, your wives, your uncles, your aunts, they'll all thank you for it. And as always, try to get one daily session of exercise, whether that be 30 minutes or an hour with us or outside, get that one daily session in.